Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me for another episode of The Rest of My Life where I show you, well, my life in context, not just looking at lovely boat stuff but looking at life overall. Now this is going to be a slightly different episode, as many of you know I've taken a good chunk of time away from YouTube, there's some slightly out of sequence filming here but we've got plenty of boat stuff, we've got plenty of rural stuff to have a look at that I hope you'll enjoy. And we're going to start with my return to the boat after I'd been away for a while because I'd been uh, looking after people's houses and building furniture at my dad's new house. All sorts of mayhem was going on. And, well, it was an interesting moment to return to the boat after so long away. About two minutes away from being on the boat for the first time in about two weeks almost. You might hear the thunder behind us. And if this isn't about a symbolic an event as you can get literally returning to the boat after all this time I just had the loudest crack of thunder I've heard for years that set off some of the car alarms and uh, yeah it's a it's a sense of foreboding to say the least my friends so my friends I've just had to run the last oh don't know if you saw a flash of lightning then just had to run the last oh wow thunder directly over us here Oh, giddy Right. Let's try that again. Wow, that's a proper, proper good bit of thunder. I've just had to run the last sort of 100 feet, 200 feet from the bridge just over there because obviously this weather started to happen. Again, what the symbolism here could be, depending on which way you wanted to look at it, of is this. Look at this, damn the boat. You're running to salvation and safety from the madness of the world on the boat like you always have done. Don't sell it. Or is it? Dan, this is the storm of judgment. This is your warning to clear off. There's no place for you out here, my friend. And so on. That was a dramatic uh, bit of acting there from me for this minute. Oh, my giddy aunt. Oh, that was some fun. Okay my friends, something weird's been going on recently and this is a clip I recorded weeks and weeks ago but it's still been happening but out of nowhere, I don't know if it's just chance or what's going on but not only when I'm out and about on the canal or in my hometown of Oswestry or at work or all over the place, just when I'm out and about in general, loads of people keep recognising me and coming up and asking if do you do the videos? Oh, sort of interesting. And it's really bizarre. So hello and thank you to you all. Um, but it's absolute madness. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so that was just a random thing. So yesterday, I did a little bit of recording to the camera after I was walking out from the bus trip back down the road to the boat after saying that a load of people had recognised me in town, which was a little bit unnerving. Well, you're paying for your shopping and so on. Um, and again, I've just had an absolutely wonderful uh, conversation with somebody who I heard uh, talking to their partner outside the boat, going, it's Dan's boat, it's Dan's boat. Which, as I say, it's all a bit of fun, but it's extraordinary that, that I think it's the fifth person in the last uh, sort of 36 hours to have known who I am. And this, my friends, is half seven in the morning on the canal. So, as I say, I've had an interesting and slightly unsettled couple of months, really. And with people going on holiday and my dad moving house and stuff, I've been all over the place. And then, obviously, I've been debating whether to sell the boat or not and all of this stuff. Everybody, please calm down. Uh, after I posted my video talking about selling the boat, I'm not joking, between the comments and messages to me, Facebook and Twitter and anywhere I've done anything online ever... I, if there hasn't been at least 800 messages and comments, I would be very surprised. So I apologise if I haven't got back to you or if I've missed important messages that people want answers to. I apologise. It's been literally an unreal last two weeks or so. Anyway, that's all for a future video to talk about. Um, but yeah, so... 
like you say, there's all sorts going on. So I spent a good amount of uh, time in town. Well, uh, people were on holiday and that, so I was looking after the animals and stuff. And because we've had some excellent weather mingled in with some terrible weather recently, I got plenty of walking in around Oswestry, Street, my hometown. So let's take a look at some of that. But first, let's just enjoy 30 seconds or so of urban Osra Street life. This was one night when I was just walking back down from my friend's house after I'd been up there for a couple of hours. And I think at this particular time I was, uh, I think I was heading down to my nan and granddad's house. Anyway, let's enjoy a little urban moment and then loads and loads of rural scenery. It's amazing just how quiet town is these days outside of the peak sort of, well, not even Friday night anymore, just the Saturday night in many cases. Although saying that, we've obviously got cars and all sorts coming, so I'm going to stop filming hastily. So there's a very easy way to tell if I'm having a good night or not when I'm out and about in Oswestry. Street. And uh, if I'm walking back to my nan and granddad's with something like this in my hand, then I'm pretty happy. <laughs> right then, my friends, I'm trying to record with the headphones while I'm out and about a bit more to see if recording with the microphone in line gives us a more even audio recording. So let's see how this goes. Um, just a random little thing and one of these little moments that sort of illustrates how little traditions and stuff can start here. So on the very edge of Oswestry, Street, the last houses of town are literally on that side of this hedge here. Then we've got all of these trees and obviously then just the countryside, well, a reservoir and then the countryside for miles on end. But once upon a time, many, many years ago, like for the best part of 20 years or so ago now, um, one of my friends and his friends used to come up here and get themselves a lot of smoke under the trees and what have you. And they were like uh, coming up from the local school and stuff. And they dubbed these as the trees of woe. Then about 10 years later, he just mentioned that to me. He's like, oh, you're going up past the trees of woe. To which I then have adopted that term and now I've been using it to describe them to anybody. <laughs> and again, now there's probably getting on for, like you say, 20 years or so of tradition of these being the trees of woe that started with a couple of kids smoking sneakily underneath the trees. And well, hopefully I will uh, keep it going until it's been around for like 50 years or so and maybe I can get the name adopted more widely. But it's just one of those weird things that now people who have never ever seen or been within a mile of the people who originally started that name and now we're referring to it to me as and when I'm talking about going out walking. If it's rural peace and quiet and classic countryside scenery with a little hint of wind in the air then my goodness me, look no further than this field. Absolutely extraordinary place and somewhere I've been hundreds and hundreds of times, probably well over a thousand times on walks over the years. See, you've got your traditional sheep in the fields roaming free, crows just in the air kicking off. And you might be able to see you've got a, uh, oh, a duck just literally about there, just sticking his head up. You've got a little wooden uh, plank bridge across a little stream that as you can imagine, over the passing of the seasons, that stream almost disappears at some points and then rapidly comes back over the winter rainy months. And your beautiful blue sky. Oh, cars in the background. Oh, I'm not going this way though. And here, uh, yeah, we pass ourselves in through the uh, the modern style uh, gate here. You can see exactly what I'm saying about a little stream here tumbling down and then it follows the side of the road down there but this is about as much of all of the features of the countryside that you'd maybe traditionally sort of think of like as Shropshire all in one place I think like having the old dead trees on the raggedy little sort of rolling hillside here just beautiful and again uh, Mr and Mrs Duck just over there just waddling their way uphill so ignore the fact you can see my shadow here hello everybody this is one of the most fascinating little places that there is. Just hidden away in the corner of this field, you can see all this old brick and breeze block drainage system that literally is just the drainage from the water that's running beneath the fields, just down from the race course, which is a, a hill that we're very, very much at the foot of at the moment. But if I uh, stand up here very carefully, you can see it's literally just drainage from streams and goodness knows what running down this very low sloping hillside here 
and it's just disappearing off the well goodness knows where it's really springing from my friends i thought i was being clever and coming out in the evening ready to catch the sunset i was walking up to the hill fort in that direction as you can see the sun is a uh, pretty much set if we pan the camera around you can see beautiful evening don't get me wrong absolutely lovely uh, effect going on here however we've got a little bit of the last sunlight touching the top of the copy and uh, the hill fort itself is in total uh, shadow so we'll forget that plan <laughs> a side note though how temptingly placed is this random football to just absolutely run at it and launch it across into the horse fields over the way but i have self-control and uh, we'll just wander our way into well goodness knows where been up and down here and all these paths down the hillside been carved out by bikers with little jumps and stuff put in many times on a bike and also on my much beloved mountain board that i used to have you can hear now as we pass into the trees, get onto sort of a direct line of ear shot. Uh, the bypass roads that all cut across around the outskirts of Oswald Street before you just left two miles and miles of countryside. Right then my friends, I think we'll wrap this video up here. I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody over the last few months and over the last few weeks for sticking with me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Future videos will have a little bit more structure and a bit more boating, I'm sure, mingled in. Um, but ultimately, I just want to say a huge thank you to absolutely everybody and to the people who've followed me for years and years. It's just incredible and it's been amazing to see so many of you in real life recently, if a little unnerving. Um, as I say, there's no Patreon anymore or anything like that, so if you want to support anything like this, then please consider checking out my short books for the Kindle and also the paperback as well. Um, feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram and Tumblr. What on earth is that noise? We're only surrounded by fields here and there's still a racket going on. Um, and yeah, ultimately, I just want to say a huge thank you. Loads of links in the description. Feel free to add me on all those things and look at me posting random pictures of me like this going on a boat. Um, but ultimately, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boat worthy. And of course, my friends, farewell. It's actually drizzling. It's actually raining on me out here now. <laughs>